Okay, another practice session before the league match this evening. Just get rid of any kinks. Let's just go here. Try and learn from lessons. Let's tuck this pawn. Would mean we have an isolated pawn here, but maybe some access. Let's capture here. Seeing as they're not wanting to play ball. It's probably reluctant to take because we'll get the 20 pointer. Yeah, so he's not taken. So we'll capture. Bishop captures here, so he's looking to attack our knight. Let's castle. Because queen coming through disturbing. Bishops are getting all activated. It's getting a bit huffy. Let's attack the bishop. Let's capture the bishop. It's really protecting his queen, so let's try and take advantage of that because the psychology goes a little bit like if you're going to protect a piece so much and not use it, then maybe some other parts of your game really suffer. Maybe you're not confident enough with um, working with other pieces. So I'm going to bring this bishop here now. X ring through to the king at the same time as attacking. Let's capture. Queen takes. Now before we actually take the queen, is there anything else that we could do? We could bring our rook to support, then his queen escapes. And that might be a bad thing for us. So we've worked hard to get to this point. So we as well just capture. And we've got the 20 pointer, which is the king not going and castling. So maybe we take advantage of that by putting a check on him first. And the white square bishop wants to develop, but I'm not sure if I want to double my pawns up on that situation. So uh, I need to get my bishop out of there. If I put it here, though, his rook comes across. Let's do that for now. Because we've got the knight protecting at the moment. And he's looking to get rid of our knight, isn't he? Because his king's coming down for our pawn. Interesting. Yeah, but our bishop just goes here. We've got enough space now. And I'm, I'm thinking, just because of that earlier protection of the queen, they're not confident about playing the rest of the game. So it's the smallest of little psychologies for myself. I'm just trying to build on that now. Bishop can't go there, can't go there, so we're going to end up doubling our pawns if we don't move the rook up. So we could move the rook up. What other designs has he got? Let's go here. Ah, he wants to own the file. So we can move the bishop now. Yeah. So if we move the bishop back, his knight comes and attacks both the pawn and the... Yeah, so let's go here. Wow, that was quick. Bit of a preemptive stuff going on there. That's because our pawn can shoot up here and attack the knight. Knight will then jump and put a fork on um, our rook and the pawn at the same time. Let's just push this pawn up. And then maybe push onto the bishop as well. So he's still attacking our rook anyway. So let's take the rook off the board. Okay, so still building on the fact that. Um, Maybe their game isn't as good in this sphere. So we'll attack the knight because it's unprotected. Bring our king across. So it's end game time now. How's their end game? Knight takes, bishop takes, bishop's on the pawn. Can't move the king here. Can move the knight, we don't need to exchange. But the pawn here is being under attack. So let's just uh, capture them. So he's got the pawn. We're plus two at the moment, so we don't want to be greedy. That is a key thing. Yep. So I'm not panicking that we're going to lose that pawn because we're still a pawn up. Um, maybe he takes this pawn. And then we push up and uh, work our way around with the king. No, he doesn't. It's not falling for that one. Okay, so this is like a steady little road now. I believe the king can just start working its way through the center. He has to drop his king down. Yeah. And just work our bishop in. Looking to attack his bishop. 
This bishop probably doesn't want to be exchanging because he's minus one. Oh, he does. We've got the pawn majority on this side, so his king probably needs to go there to block. And we've got to get the rhythm right with the pawns now, so we can push here, or we can just push onto his pawn here. Let's take advantage of the extra pawn and push here. So he does capture. So we're closer to the pawn here now, so let's push this pawn up. So it's a counting exercise. Yep. I'm going to just push this pawn up. Our pawns are right down the bottom, so what we can do is push onto the king now and capture here. King will probably go to the side of the pawn. And if he goes to the side, we do have options. Now, the counting calculation exercise is key in this type of situation. If I go one, two, three, yeah, capture. He goes one, two, three, four, five, capture. But it's five, but then he's on to this pawn. So it's going to be one, two, three. He's one, two, three. I can push my pawn up so it's further away from him. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. So he's got a five count to actually get to our first pawn. And he's realized this. So we can still go because he's still got a five count with his king and go and attack these because he's losing time as he's doing this so eventually the pawns will go and we're probably in a better position yeah because of the pawns we just snap them up and we've got more pawns to work with that's calculation